Ping pong is not the Macarena. It takes patience. She is like the fine, well-aged prostitute. It takes years to learn her tricks. <laughs> She is cruel. Laughs at you when you are naked. <laughs> But you keep coming back for more and more. Why? Because she is the only prostitute I can afford. Hello, folks, and welcome to the Cinema Beat Podcast. I'm laughing already. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill. With you tonight is Iris. Hello, hello, people. How you doing? Fine. It's a beautiful day today, you know. But nobody can go out and enjoy it because it is fucking thing. I don't want to talk about it, though. It's just a, it was a nice day outside, though. Oh, my gosh. Uh, my friend is here. I've known him for a lot of years. Uh, Darlene, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Cool. You do something cool with your lady friends because you're a geek like the rest of us, and you can, you can tell us all about it now. Maybe you can like get some exposure for your lady friends. Oh, yeah. Um, I run the uh, Fandom Collective group in um, Northeast Ohio. We do meetups. Um, well, of course, we can't do person-to-person meetups right now because of what's going on, but we're trying to kick off um, virtual meetups in our Facebook group and through um, Discord, I believe, right now. So um, we're looking to possibly do Cards Against Humanities as our first virtual event, and we'll see how it goes after that. Always a good time. Sounds like fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people were interested when I posted it in our Facebook group. So, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot and see how it works. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, we are here tonight, and uh, normally 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 we kick off a show is I'm gonna ask uh, we defer our guest this time around and ask her, Darlene, what she's been watching lately. Well. I finally can say I have downtime because, you know, my real job is an insurance company and my dream job is being a vendor, which I do. And unfortunately, all our shows are kind of canceled or postponed for a while. So I picked up um, Lucifer again and I started watching The Boys. Yeah, I got into The Boys, but I never got into Lucifer. But um, I know Tom Welling's on like the later seasons which uh, pertains to something I'm going to talk about when uh, it's my turn to talk about this stuff. Um, yeah, I, I've always wanted to watch it, though. And um, then him showing up in the crossover event from the last time, um, last DC crossover thing, I, I mean, we'll watch it even more, so maybe I'll jump on that. It's on Netflix, right? Um, season four is. Oh, I think I, you might have to find one seasons one through three somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, but I know season four and probably season five is going to be on Netflix. Okay. I'll kick it to um, Iris next. What you been watching, girl? Oh, I'm, I've been going to back to the old stuff, you know, like uh, Heavy Metal and Saturday the 14th. Forgot how funny that movie was. Oh, it really is. <laughs> it's my kind and of then, silly. All right, all right. And then uh, Super 8. Love that movie for some reason. It's so cute. It. Really, then we watched um, the uh, the door in the woods. That was pretty good. It you know creepy, fun. Um, but yeah. Oh, and then um, started watching uh that that Tiger King thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, talk about some serious wackadoo people. But you know, I, I yeah I can't wait to finish it because it's it's kind of again that morbid curiosity takes over and you just have to watch that shit show all the way through the end. Well, but you got a guy who raises tigers who's a bisexual polygamist. You, you know, you got gold right there already. So it's, it's, exactly. Uh... <laughs> and then one of his one of his husbands looks like a pinhead. I mean, wow! You, you just gotta watch. My sister's watching like I, they have to be from Florida, right? And then some mm-hmm. of them are. That makes that makes it all that much better. See, <laughs> exactly. Because all the good shit happens in Florida. See all all the crazy shit. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, I ain't got a whole lot to talk about as far as, like, what I watched lately. Because uh, I've been getting a lot of stuff in for um, to record some more sloppy second, s- sloppy second segments for you guys. So me and Court have been running through the Hellraiser series like like mad people trying to get some, some backlogged episodes to drop in these shows. And those are, in the later ones, they're not very good. But you know what? We're, we're committed, so we're going to finish watching them. Um, 
besides that, I've been watching a lot of Smallville. I've been doing, um, I've been doing this thing where I, I own them all on, on digital. So I said I'm gonna keep it going. And then you keep on, you keep going, and you realize how much, how, how why you love the show to begin with. And I remember seeing the pilot um, many moon ago at a Comic Con. I think it was at a Wizard show. And when was that? Like 2001 or something, or 2002, right around there. But being so excited to see that trailer, and then watch it now, and realizing that <clears throat> of all the shows that are out now, Smallville still is the best, though. But I'm in the middle of season five, where uh, Aquaman is introduced, and Lois Lane is is a thing now, and you get a lot of sexy Lois in this season, and I am mad at that. And um, but he's still doing this thing to where you start to realize now that Lex is his enemy. But, you know, Lex is something really shitty to, like... There's a, the episode with Aquaman where he wants to, like, use a weapon in the ocean to kill all the fish to, like, use against, like, different countries. And all, he does something awful. And the Clark's like, Lex, what are you up to? Yada, yada, yada. And then, like, the end of the thing, he's like, oh, Lex, I really appreciate what you've done for me. No, motherfucker, this is your enemy. you got to realize this by now. Your dad's been telling you this since fucking season one. And... It just really holds up. I really enjoy it. And um, Darlene, when she was doing shows, I'm sure she bumps into m- many uh, a Smallville alum there, except for oh yeah, except for the one in question. Uh, well, I actually met her. Well, you met her. I, I I've seen her. You know, before, pre you know, sex uh, um, um, whatever the hell she harm of women or sex trafficking, mm-hmm. whatever deep shit she's into. I've seen Next. her. Sh- it mixed, mixed. Uh, Rosenbaum's always the best, though, I think. I, I love that guy. And his podcast is really good, too. Inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum. Check it out. It's, it's really yes, good. I, I've listened to a few of them, and, and I had to stop because I was laughing more than actually working. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think I picked up Smallville around the, the same season you're, you're on right now because they added Lois. And I need to go back and probably watch the first four seasons. But, yeah, was that, once Lois was there, I was committed to until it ended and yeah I love that series I've always had this feeling because the lady that played Lana Lang in Superman 3 plays plays Clark's mother in, in the show and he's always pining for Lana on the show mm-hmm. so it's kind of like he wants to fuck his mom and I always thought really weird things about that and um I don't know why it's like a real back to the future thing I guess it's really strange but uh <laughs> impure thoughts about your mother is a never good thing yeah, that's what I think he's thinking about when he mentions Lana, and then I see Annette O'Toole, and she played Lana in that movie, and I was like, yeah, you know, but, uh, <laughs> strange. No, but uh, James Marster shows up in this playing Brainiac, and he hasn't revealed his intentions yet, but it's, you know it's going to be bad, and uh, it's um, good stuff, good show. Um, besides that, I, I haven't watched the Tiger King yet, because I just keep, like, saying... Okay, I'm doing work. I'll just turn on New Girl on Netflix and just keep it playing for like an hour and a half or something, and you know, which is fine. I did watch Eating Raul with the two drink guys, so that's going to be coming out. We watched Anaconda Three, which stars David Hasselhoff and John oh Reese Davies. It's not. I good. didn't know there was a third one. Oh, there's there's like six of them or something. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> there's like six of them or something. We're doing like Snake Month on NFW. But the the snake in the movie is totally totally CG and it's it's really funny that the snake looks really bad. You want to let you? It's fun to watch with the group because the, there's there's driving scenes in the movie, and it was it was like they're in the jeep and like somebody's rocking it back and forth. They have video of the of the jungle playing in the background. <laughs> it's oh my like, god! It's like watching <laughs> Toons is the driving cat, but in an anaconda movie and. <laughs> It looks really bad, and that's why it's so funny. And the snake has googly eyes and shit. I mean, this is what this is what sci-fi channel movies are made for. You know, crap like this, and just something you can laugh at, and not take seriously. So, I think I gave These it like the best. A, I think I gave it like a six or something because I just had a good time with it. It was really awful though. Ugh. Those are the best ones though. And then I think, oh yeah, we did we did do a watch party. We uh, watched Terrorvision. We had a few other people, and that's always a good time. I love I love my Diane Franklin and uh, my Mary Warrenov, two, two two Mary Warrenov films in there. See, it's, it's good stuff, you know. Willis Willis bitching the whole time during that com- commentary, Iris. 
about how, how unsexy Mary Warren is. Like, you're fucking wrong, man. What the? What is wrong with that boy? It's like, look, look at them legs. Look, look at that mm. butt. Mm. I mean, she ain't got much going on the breast for him, but that's a nice perky set of A cups, and I, I ain't mad at it at all, man. That, that's <laughs> Mary's been all, always been hot. That was a Warhol girl right there. It's it's uh, it's like Willis, you're fucking crazy. He's throwing it out there, okay? You know, he's so crazy. Oh my god, this is um, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna skip this. I'm, we're gonna go into something else, and uh, instead of the beef, we didn't do it last time either, ours, because I I wanted something positive in, in, in my life, so um. I'm gonna kick it to Darlene first. It could be anything, Darlene. Name something that you're 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 looking forward to that that's coming or that that's that's good in your life. I, I want you to tell me what that is because uh, that's more important than getting mad about stuff. <laughs> something good. Um, hmm. Uh, really? <laughs> really? I'm sorry. Um, I guess. Uh, Everything's up in the air, but I might be able to celebrate my anniversary with my boyfriend in May somewhere. If, I'm hoping uh, so too. I'm for, for, show happens. For the both of you, you know, this is one of my best friends in the world, by the way, her boyfriend. So it, it, it's, uh, I'm hoping good things for him. Yeah, I mean, with everything up in the air, it's, it's kind of hard because long distance relationships are difficult to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we're hoping that, you know, something breaks of what's going on in the world that, you know, we can hopefully meet up and, and see each other, if not, you know, eventually, but um, yeah, it's something to look forward to. It'll be quite a few years now, but yeah. Cool. Iris, what about you, girl? I have seen the trailer to uh, Peninsula, which is Train to Busan 2. Yeah. And oh my god, I am so stoked. I can't wait to watch that. And I hope, I really, really hope that I can watch that on the big screen. Mm, maybe. And not, and not, you know, you know, the VO, you know, pay for video thing. I'm hoping, hoping. And then, of course, there's the arrival of my two grandkids, uh, one in the end of May and the other one at the end of January. Yeah, they're pumping so, them out, aren't they, babe? Oh, man, yeah, they are. I got a little girl and then a little boy coming, so I'm excited about that. Aw. I didn't make any notes for my mother because um, I didn't find the right deaf mute yet. Let's put it that way. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that, though. Oh, good lord. No, Iris knows I ain't got patience. I got patience for certain women. I, I, just not not that kind of woman yet. That's, that's, uh, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need to good. find yourself a good cougar, lady, is what you need to that's do. That's what I need. I, I need to be a kept man. That's all that is. Well, uh, sugar a, lot, a lot of yes ma'am and no ma'am stuff, you know. Huh? It's like, man, you're a pussy. I was like, nope, I'm being taken care of, okay? Come on now. Just, that's uh, right. That's right. <laughs> Got to get that social security check there, Irish. I'm playing. I'm there you done. go. <laughs> <laughs> she brings out the perv of me there, darling, but that, that comes out on its own, really. But um, I, I, I help. I oh, I. Help. <laughs> My God, stuff I'm looking forward to uh, a lot because I found that um, they're doing a live action Dragon's Lair with Ryan Reynolds. I'm excited about that. Oh um, my god, that looks so cool! I want that to happen so bad. I wa it's for Netflix. I watch that all day long. That's, that's that seems like a good time. What what else? Um, there's not it's not a ton, man. Because again, a lot of stuff is on hold. So, like Ghostbusters is on hold until 2021. But then we're getting a sequel to to that the lady one. They only like half the cast in, but you know that's that's a reboot for later. You know, but um, there's there's um what else? I think oh, I saw I, Quiet Place 2 is coming out in September now. What's that now? I think I saw a Quiet Place 2 is coming out in September now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's good. This is coming. I'm glad it's coming. I know, right? I miss the theaters. <laughs> oh, exciting stuff, you know, for those who... Well, everybody missed South by Southwest, uh, the big Texas film festival. I don't know to what extent, but Amazon Prime is going to be streaming the films from the festival for free on their, their streaming service. So really, that's something oh, to look forward cool. to. Yeah, so for those who uh, go to those festivals and you miss them, you're gonna miss them anyway. But they're gonna be showing them for free to people, and 
I think HBO's giving stuff away for free, and there's lots of folks, folks doing stuff for free. I think YouTube just dropped a whole bunch of cartoons on there for, for like, old ones. And I'm um, grateful for that, free streaming stuff. I discovered Pluto TV, so if you're not on Pluto TV yet, there's a, a lot of a lot of stuff on there to watch. I think I watched American Gladiators for, like, like five hours just one day, just working in my room on stuff. Just kept just kept it on. <laughs> you know, I don't know why, but just kept it on. No, they got a lot of great channels on there, so lots of stuff to watch. So if you're in quarantine, there's no shortage of stuff to watch. It's just the stuff that's coming uh, excites me as well. And just um, people be a little more, people be a little more civil to each other too. I, I'm, I'm I'm happy for that too. It's just um, yep. some of y'all motherfuckers are rude before. And you know who you are. You don't listen to this show probably, but you know, go kick somebody in the ass. That is okay, please. That that is your mission as a Sin of Beef uh, podcast listener. To go kick a rude motherfucker in the ass. There six, you go. Six feet away, of course. You know, you might, you might need, <laughs> you might need a broom handle or something. I don't know, but it's, it's a did did handy your handy business. But um, <laughs> that's when the ten foot pole comes in real handy. Yes. <laughs> but we're here tonight to do two films. That ape on uh, the one Bruce Lee film that brought him brought him to America. Enter the Dragon uh, and a show called Doing the Dragon Justice, and uh. These movies may or may not do that. We're doing uh, Mortal Kombat from 1995. I was 14 years old and we came out, people. I was I was young. Oh, and, um, <laughs> I'm not trying to make you feel old, Iris, okay? I'm just saying how old I was. I was thrust from middle school going into high school, okay? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you just so, made me feel old. <laughs> just awkward erections and you know weird stuff like that you know just it's a uh, the wind blows and there you go man depending on who it is for sure just uh and balls of fury from 2007 uh that's fun 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 ping pong movie that we're talking about oh what could do this uh we'll do this um we're sort of looking for if we're, we're one years after another one there uh <laughs> never mind <laughs> we're doing Mortal Kombat from 1995 I'm fucking tired of people we'll do that movie first we're going to get to that right after the trailer. In each of us, there burns the fury of a warrior. In every generation, a few are chosen to prove it. One of you three will decide the outcome of the tournament. Three strangers. <laughs> will travel to the mystical realm of Outworld to defend our people against Shang Tsung. You will die. And his forces of darkness. In an ancient tournament, one more victory. Your soul is mine. And our world no! is theirs. It has begun. I don't need to run. Mortal Kombat, of course, based on the popular video game series um, from 1995. Uh, your cheaper plot synopsis is this: three unknowing martial artists are summoned to a, summoned 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 to a mysterious island to compete in a tournament whose outcome will decide the fate of the world. Well, two of them are knowing, really. Just one of them is kind of unknowing. Just saying plot plot synopsis. Okay, you fucking suck. Uh, this stars uh, was directed first of all by, by Paul W S Anderson who gave us those those never ending string of uh, fucking Resident Evil movies that I love and hate at the same time, and um, this stars Christopher Lambert, Robin Shaw, Lyndon Ashby, Carrie uh, Hiroyuki Tagawa, who's in both these films. It's, it's totally by accident too. 
Um, yep. Yep, they know that. <laughs> Bridget Wilson, uh, t- 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 Talisa Soto, and uh, I'm going to call mm-hmm. this not not Michelle Suave, Trevor Goddard as Kano, because have you seen the film Demons of Four, Darlene? No, I haven't. It's from 1985, and this is a film that you should watch because it's a fun, fun horror film. But there's a guy in the movie that has a mask like Kano in the movie. Okay. So every time I see him, I just say, Kano wins, because he looks just <laughs> like him, you know. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, it's got, a, it's got a big cast of fun people. and um, no, I'd like to say before we even start that it, most of these guys did their own stunts. So that that's something you can't, can't really say. And uh, <laughs> that they, they're... Uh, just hamming it up, especially Sonya, who busted her shoulder. Uh, Brigitte Wilson, Sampras, um, married to Pete Sampras, of course. The tennis player, that's a little thing there. But I'll have a kick it to our guest first, Darlene, and ask her what she thinks of Mortal Kombat from 1995. Um, it was a fun movie. I mean, I remember loving it when it first came out. I'm just not sure it held up for me. Um storyline-wise or anything. I mean, CGI, definitely. I mean, it had its fun moments, but I think the soundtrack is, is my favorite part of the whole film right now. I got it somewhere. I do have it somewhere. The soundtrack to the, on CD somewhere. <laughs> sold, sold a bunch of copies back in the day. Yeah, it was my ringtone for a while. <laughs> Dear boy. Yeah, I'll, I'll kick it to Iris and feel free to jump in whenever you want to, Darlene. Uh, what did okay. you think of it, girl? <laughs> Oh, dude, this is one of my favorite fantasy martial arts action movies. Um, uh, the first time I watched it, uh, I got to watch it in the movie theater, and it was so much fun. Not only because we used to play the game quite a bit, but just to see those characters come to life, and then, of course, you have this beautiful choreographed um, martial arts that's going on. So the, the fight scenes, to me are lots of fun. The choreography that they used there was real, to me it was done real well. Um, Then of course you have um, the music like you you mentioned, Darlene, and and it's, uh, I mean, I think we went through two DVD, two CDs because um, the kids loved it. And uh, I think, man, I think Donnie was maybe four years old. And he would come up to me and he goes, Mama, Mama, the fight song, the fight song. <laughs> so of course, I knew it was Mortal Kombat. So, you know, it was, it was his way of saying, could, would you kindly throw on the Mortal Kombat CD? And he would sit there and he'd be doing all these moves. And, of course, it, it became one of his favorite movies, too, because he would sit down and watch it, you know, whenever it was on HBO or whatever. And later on, as he grew up, he watched it quite a bit, too. So, yeah, this has always been such a fun movie to me. I mean, I can see where it wouldn't um, hold up very well <clears throat> nowadays. But, um, I don't know, I think uh, it, this movie's more about nostalgia for me than anything else. I mean, I, 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 love, uh, I love this movie. I mean, it, it does... I, I, it takes like, that, that plot for End of the, Dra- End of the Dragon and makes it, like, extreme, I guess, because... Mm-hmm. You, you literally have a guy who could breathe fire out of his skull, his skull head, and a guy who could freeze people with with a, with a, with a for the ice ball and stuff like that. And yeah, oh, and don't forget the four handed, the four armed thing, Goro. Oh, go, Goro, you know what? Yeah, I love I love Goro in the film. I think they 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 did they did him right. I mean, he he looks a little silly in parts as far as, like the CG parts, but the fact that they built an animatronic fucking monster for this film. It has all those details. I, I love the part where he's just about to fight. He's cracking his knuckles. I love that oh, yeah, scene. Yeah. But the, the, they built this thing, and it didn't work very well. So they had to film everything, um, so, like in like on like a soundstage. Whereas them them going coming in on the boats, they literally had to they be rowed on boats to the location to film this movie, which I thought was pretty dope too. But the film itself. If you can't love Christopher Lambert just overacting all over this fucking movie, just chewing that scenery, <laughs> I, I, I don't think we're friends, man. I'm just throwing no, it out I, there. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, him as Raiden was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Just doing, doing the Lambert laugh and sparking lightning from his finger and shit, and, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, man. 
And then I don't know if you've seen Mortal Kombat Annihilation, but you get you get James Remar replaced with him in that movie, and he's just not like having a sense of humor at all about it. This dude is super serious. So I was like, it doesn't work, man. It just don't work. <laughs> not without yeah, that. He wasn't as fun. Um, <clears throat> this movie, like like um, uh, Darlene was saying, and I mean, um, Ivers too. Uh, the fight choreography is is something else. I mean, Robin Shaw is was a Hong Kong stuntman before this, so. He brought a lot of his, you know, intuition, even a lot of the training for the other actors into this. They basically let them do their own thing, and the stuff, with the, the 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 fight scenes he had were, were pretty great. And the um, one of my favorite shots of the film is when I, f- I forget who fights Scorpion. Was it was it was it Johnny Cage? I think Johnny Cage. No, it was yeah, it was, it was, yeah. it was Luke Kang fought, fought Scorpion. But they had that long shot in the forest, and I know it's all done by a computer, but. That looks really good, and it was, it was Johnny Cage because because Liu, Liu Kang fought uh, Sub Zero. Yeah, which... <laughs> good. Yeah, because they, they go from from the pretty forest area into kind of like a hell type of looking place. Fucking, fucking Lambert bringing that barrel of water, that that bucket of water in there like he's like a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon. I love shit like that. He's like, by the way, this is gonna come into play later. <laughs> <laughs> and it did because he, he, you know, he, he shot the the ice thing at him, and Liu Kang threw the bucket of water and speared him in the gut, and it's really awesome. And it's just um a lot of like stuff in here. Peter Jason shows up for like two seconds with a beard, and then turns into Shang Tsung. And um, what Shang Tsung? You know, the, you get it right from the beginning that he's just gonna be like this fucking cheesy character. That you'd love to see in the video game. You, there's certain beats from the video game that are in here. Like when Sonya's captured. And she's hanging out like a display piece. Chained up to the thing. Like waiting for somebody to have a fight I guess. And uh, stuff I didn't like about the movie. I like the reptile fight itself. Once the little crappy looking CG lizard dude got into the body. And they started fighting. That was real fine. But you saw a little bit too much of that CG lizard thing and it looked really crappy even even by 1995 standards it looked pretty crappy and um but yeah that 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 fight was pretty awesome too you got a lot of johnny cage beats in this movie you got him punching goro in the dick that was awesome because you you, you (laughs) knew you knew it it, you know if you played the first game you knew it had to happen he did the splits and he punched him in the dick so it's it's uh it was a given and he did something i didn't like though when, when when he off scorpion he does the, the the friendship move where he throws the autograph down and that that oh it's not as worse as the baby remember the babalities where you turn somebody into a baby as a finishing move how stupid that was it wasn't as it wasn't as stupid as that but still pretty stupid and uh it's just, it's just it's, it, I have a good time you know once that 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 soundtrack comes pumping in and. Like I said, it's it's sold a lot of copies, including this fucking fat fourteen year old child back in the day. I, I bought a copy, probably from Kmart or something from from back in the day. Um, but um, yeah, that soundtrack mixed with all the crazy scenery you had going on, and Lambert hamming it up just in the right place. I mean, this hits me right my comfort zone, and I know it's not a good movie, but it's a film from my past that I can have a good time with, and. It just hits all those video game beats. That, I mean, there's not many video game movies that, that do it correctly while they live in the context of the film. I mean, there's there's video game films I love that I know are, are incorrect. You know, like, Double Dragon is a dumb movie that I could watch. M- mostly with Mark, for my, Mark DeCoscos, but that has nothing to do with the video game except the fact their names are Billy, Billy and Jimmy and they go beat up people. That That's, <laughs> that's it, you know. I mean, this film. This film gives you what it is. It's a real simple premise. They they go they go to a tournament. They're ch- there. You have to fight these uh, uh, outworldly people, and you, then you know the good guys are gonna win because you know that's that's how these movies go. And I I can appreciate the simplicity of it. I know I know it's very cheese dick and stuff, but the simplicity of it, mixed with the soundtrack, mixed with the um, the actors they got. Um, Robin Shaw, the only thing I know him from American wise is that he was in Beverly Hills Ninja with Chris Farley. He was in other stuff too, I'm sure, but you know, it's just um this was like only like his second American acting role ever. But um I'll kick it to Darlene again and ask her 
anything else you'd say about the movie and uh, what we should give a one to ten? Well, the nostalgia factor that you brought up, it, you know, it, Mortal Kombat is, is one of my favorite video games to play. Um, and them bringing characters to life, you know, was pretty great. You know, the Annihilation brought some more in as well, but um, probably a, a, an eight. Cool. For, um, yeah, an eight. Iris? Um, I'm going to give this... Uh... An eight, also. It's it's lots of fun, and it's always good to just sit down and just veg to this. Even if you're not watching it, you you know you're listening for the music anyway, and you know why not? So I'll give it an eight too. I've seen this so many times growing up, and even now that you know there was points in the film where I had my head turned the other way doing other things, but I knew just what was going on on screen because I've seen it so many times. It's just um. One of those crazy things, but yeah, yeah I, I love it. I, I, I splurged enough on this and to say why I love it and just, just reading about how much work went into it from the actors, it made me love it even more because a lot of them had limited stunt work or no stuntmen at all. I think the only one that had like a limited stuntman was Lyndon Ashby, the guy that played played Johnny Cage, and um, even that wasn't a whole lot. He, he did a lot of it himself because... Robin Shaw showed him how to be a stuntman, and um, Br- Bridget Wilson, uh, Miss, you know, <laughs> what's the line from Billy Madison? This will never be our milk or something like that, she tells him. I was like, yeah, I, I just think about that and uh, smile. But um, she did all of her own stunts and hurt herself, so I love I love the fact that all this, all this work went into it, and we get a fucking rubber monster on all this, for Christ's sake, and Goro. It's just wonderful. I, I love it. Um, it, it's a yeah, tip for me too, though. I, I got to be brutally honest that if I didn't still have a whole lot of fun with the movie, is like as much as I did when I was fourteen and having a great time with it, and I, as much joy now out of it, I I wouldn't give it an eight. But uh, if you think that if you don't like this, go watch Mortal Kombat Annihilation because there's there is something wrong with that movie, and it's got Brian Thompson, which is an actor I enjoy as the main bad guy, but he's not a good actor, people. It's limited. This is why it, this is why it doesn't talk. This is why it doesn't talk much in Cobra, but he's a great bad guy. It's just um, ooh, but yeah, that's about it for this one. And uh, our next feature is Balls of Fury from 2007, and we're gonna get thrust right into that right after the trailer. In the criminal underworld, there is a deadly tournament of champions. Many enter, but only one survives. <laughs> now, his name is Mr. Fane. Walk it off, Ling. We have reason to believe he's about to make a major shipment into the U.S. Only one man hey. has the balls. How you doing, buddy? I was just going for more cheese and mac. Hello. To bring him down. What do you want me to do about it? What you were born to do. Fang is a ping pong fanatic. Your ticket in. Ping pong, or as the Chinese say, ping pong. But it will take dedication. First up, Randy Daytona versus the hammer. Have your grandma pull the car around. Mm-hmm. Tastes good. Skills. That's my niece. She will be giving you hands on training. Give some wax off a whole new room. And practice. You got me swatting flies? Do not hit flies. You hit bees. This is your homing device, and this is the transmitter. I think we'll have to sneak this in the old fashioned way. Put the tube of toothpaste on with that. <laughs> the fate of the world. Yeah. We have champions from every continent. Okie dokie, on a chunky. Lies in one man's no! ball. Yes! <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself. You got mad skills. <gasps> Kill them. Well, duh. What part of sudden death didn't you understand? Balls of fury. In my hand, I hold a cricket. Who the hell said take the cricket from my hand? Put it back. It flew away, man. 
you squish lucky cricket? No. All right, folks. Balls of Fury from 2007. Uh, your cheapo plot synopsis is this. Uh, down and out former professional ping pong phenom Randy Daytona. That's a great name. Is sucked into a maelstrom. Su- sucked into a maelstrom when FBI agent Ernie Rodriguez recruits him for a secret mission. Randy's is determined to bounce back and win. Uh, puns there, see? And to smoke out his father's killer, Archfiend Fang. Played by Christopher Walken as an Asian leader. I love it so much. Um, this stars Christopher Walken as Fang. Dan, Dan Fogler. Uh, George Lopez. Maggie Hugh. Goddamn Maggie Hugh. Uh, J- James Hong. Terry Crews. Or Patrick. Dietrich Bader. Aisha Tyler. Thomas Lennon. Again, Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa again, uh, we mentioned. Jason Scott Lee. Oh, man, there's so many great comedic actors. Toby Huss shows up in this, who uh, I know and love from King of the Hill and The Adventures of Pete and Pete, already the strongest man in the world forever and ever. Uh, why is this so great? Because it has Reno 911 an alum all over it, because they wrote the movie. And uh, But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save my love for this film and kick it to Iris first. So this movie, um, actually, the first time I watch it, and it was, it was entertaining. I'd have to say, um, I, the you know, when when this came out and stuff, I kind of like eh, another parody of Enter the Dragon, whatever. Um, but just watching it, I I did have fun with it, and and it gave quite a few nice nods to enter the dragon it wasn't being disrespectful it was just being like yeah we remember this and we're going to have fun with it so I did enjoy uh, the movie um, I mean the kid who play, the guy who plays um, Randy Daytona he Dan Fogler he's a funny guy to me he's, he's a funny guy it, 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 he's kind of like a straight man and then I had forgotten that George Lopez was in this, and he doesn't have a lot of lines, but he does. You know, his 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 Latino comes out at the very end. <laughs> um, when he calls the guy pendejo, which was kind of funny. Um, and then you know, James Hong, the part that he played with this as Wong, that was funny. And, and of course, you know, they were calling him Aguelo, which is. Yeah, kind of like their version of honky. <laughs> so I thought that was cute too. Um, and I mean, who doesn't want to watch Maggie Q kick ass, right? I mean, wow. And then Terry Crews shows up too. So yeah, it was it was a fun movie. I, I really I, I enjoyed watching it. Um, but <laughs> I mean, it was a bit sophomoric, but entertaining. Cool, Darlene. Oh, I, I forgot how fun the movie was, and it's been years since I saw it, and all the people that showed up I got really excited for because I really forgot who the bad guy was. And when Walken showed up, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> um, the um, the guy who played the German um, ping pong player? Thomas Lennon. But, yes, he, he was... Uh, he he always plays a, a character I I like to keep an eye on as far as like an actor goes from the different roles he's done and stuff like that. Um, and I I was reading IMDb after I saw the movie just to see if there's you know, anything interesting I, I might have missed on that one. And I didn't realize that he wrote the movie with the director to, and he wanted to be um, the bad guy, but it went to Walken, which I thought was kind of neat. I'm like, how would that have worked out? I don't know, but. Um, once again, I love the soundtrack for this. Huge Maggie Q fan as well. Um, when Jason Scott Lee showed up, I was surprised because I totally forgot he was in the movie. And um, Pat Oswalt's um, cameo was pretty epic as well. Him holding that fucking tiny trophy makes you laugh mm-hmm. every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I completely forgot he was in there, and I'm just like, oh my god. Yeah, just it, every scene seemed to have somebody in there that I, I forgot was in it, so... Yeah, I think it, I think it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun. 
cool. Yeah, I me, mean, I love this movie. I mean, I, I, I love Dan Fogler and most things, and I, I watched the Fantastic Beast movies, and when I watched the second one, and then Queenie went away, spoilers, I was like, oh, fuck no. I was so upset, you know. It's, it's, uh, that's, um, that's a story for another time. But, yeah, he, he's really fun in this role. Um, I think me and Darlene both got to meet him. He's he's in he's in a band apparently. What's his band called again, Darlene? Oh, I can't remember. It's like the yeah, they were, they were, band they were, or something. They were they were at um, Wizard Chicago this past year. Yeah, he's kind of a dick to me, so I didn't go back to his table for myself. I did, I'm just that's just personal preference, I guess. You know. Um, <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that, but you know. <laughs> well, was he a dick to you as well? I'm sorry, you know. Um, well, he's the reason why I got a second photo op because he he pretty much like got out of frame. Ah, yeah. yeah. Scott Grimes was dope though. I got to meet that guy. So it's, it's uh he was in that action figures band as well. But um, Thank you. That was the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I love fucking love this fucking movie. I mean, James Hong's being funny all over this place, all over the place, and the the part where he's got to go play the play the dragon. And the dragon is revealed to be this little girl, and she's just angry <laughs> as hell. I I can't stop laughing at that scene every time, because you know, he's gotten really good and she's really good. So every time you know, he fucking you know gets the point, <laughs> she's like, wait, I wasn't quite ready yet. But she does says Jason Scott Lee to his her interpretation, and I this is normally something I would see him in, but he was very funny. When they throw Randy in the dumpster and he blows his nose and the eight dollars that he just won from this ping pong game, I, I, it's very funny. Um, the scene that that apes the scene where they bring Bruce Lee the horrors to his room, and they're a bunch of fucking dude bro island dudes with shorts on, and one, <laughs> of, them, one of them is Dietrich Bader, who I think is an underappreciated actor. I, I loved him in Drew Carey show. I think, you know, not, not many people know this, but he voiced Batman on the Brave and the Bold t- cartoon show, and it's very funny, and it's got some, some of the best team-ups ever on that show, and I think you guys should seek that out if you haven't watched it yet. Um, <clears throat> him, <laughs> there's a blooper at the end, because for some, for, for some reason, Fang, who's uh, Christopher Walken, who plays a... He, he doesn't change the fact that he's white, he's just talking like Christopher Walken, he dresses like he's Asian in this movie. He's like the, the he's like the the Han of this movie. The guy, he doesn't have a claw. I guess his claw is his ping pong paddle. I guess, <laughs> but uh, he's talking about the panda in the atrium. He's like, I got this panda, and uh, I think he he might be sick or something. I I really don't know what they eat. You know, <laughs> I think he's dead. <laughs> I think he's dead. And the the end of the bloopers, which are great. Dietrich Bear's gonna go save this panda, and he picks it up. It's just this fucking stuck piece of shit. It's like, I think he's dead or something like that, he says. But this is this little stuff like that makes you laugh in this movie. Um, the, um, like the real-time ping pong where, like, the ball would freeze before they hit it, shit like that, you know, and Terry Crews as, um, F- Fingers, F- Freddy Fingers is his name in the movie, can spin a ping pong ball on his finger like nobody's business, you know, a little silly shit like that. It's real cartoony, and... I, I, I have, man, I have a ball with this movie, you know, and then no, no pun or possible pun intended, and I think it's, um, underseen, <clears throat> and I think people should check it out, but, um, the, the end, the, the end scene, where he has to fight, he has to have, the, of course, Randy has to have the final showdown with, with Fang, it was, it was given, Fang has these, these, uh, sudden death, like, death vests that can electrocute you if you lose, and, he keeps changing the rules and shit, and it just ends up in the outrageous places. And I, I, everything about the movie is fun to me. I have, I have a great time with it. And I, um, I'm gonna stop here and kick it back to Iris and ask her anything else she'd like to say about the movie. And what is she gonna one to ten? Oh, I totally forgot that Chris Rock was in this, and he, he's lots of fun in that too. Uh, <laughs> but he's, he's funny and everything. Uh, he's got such he's got such a great sense of humor. He makes fun of himself. It's great. Um, I'm gonna give this one a, a seven, um, basically because I mean I yeah, not my style of movie, but I was entertained, so I, I will give it credit. I'll give it a seven. Cool, Darlene. Eight. I needed a comedy. It hit me. <laughs> nice. 
yeah, I, I have a good time with it too. And I, I have to second that eight, and I, I, I can recommend it to too many people to watch it because, like I said, I, I don't hear a lot of folks talk about this movie except the folks that have seen it. But I think the folks that that haven't seen it are, are missing out, especially folks who love that that comedy. You know that that, that um those guys can bring you. I don't know how many how many you guys on this podcast are Reno nine one one fans. But um, <clears throat> two of the guys, Thomas Lennon and uh, oh, I forget the other guy's name. He directed the movie as well. Two of those guys um, are on Reno nine one one together, and I hear it's coming back, and I can't wait. And uh, because it's just my kind of silly t- t- Thomas Lennon and those those short shorts riding a bike all the time, and it's just it's just crazy fun. And um, this movie's crazy fun too. Lots of Asian actors that you know acting silly. There's a bit where. <laughs> Oh God, where um, James Hong falls down an elevator at the end of this movie, and of course he's still alive. You know, <laughs> it's like, it like we it's, should close this. There's a blind should, man walking around. Yes, <laughs> it's silly till the end. That's it. I I I need this stupid fun in my life sometimes. So yeah, it's an eight out of ten. And um, right after this, we're gonna come back and uh, myself, Court, and Suzanne are going to talk about a movie that Suzanne doesn't like as much as the, as the other two guys and, and thing, but Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, and we'll get to that right after this. In Hellraiser 1, Clive Barker showed you his vision of a private hell. In Hellraiser 2, he took you on a journey inside the Inferno. The terror returns in mankind's final confrontation with evil. And this time, it's going to be Hell on Earth. Great club. I really love it here. It's a great club. Not quite. Just give me the box. Ready for your close-up? Presents Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth. Hello, folks. Welcome once again to the Sloppy Second segment. Uh, with me, as usual, is Court Syops. How are you doing, sir? I'm feeling the third degree of sloppiness. I'm, I'm sloppy thirds right now. Sloppy thirds, man. Yes, indeed. But uh, with us again, once again, maybe through this whole series, if she decides to, to, to stick it out with us, because these are really, really garbage. Suzanne is here. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to get really, really sloppy by the time I have my third view. Cool. But today we're doing Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, uh, from 1992, directed by Anthony Hickox, who gave us such fare as, um, I think Waxwork was one of his, for sure. Yeah, it was. Warlock 1 and 2. Warlock 1 and 2. So we have a a like actress in here for Warlock 2. Um, We'll talk about that momentarily. A.K.A. Court's huge crush in the 90s. I was man. obsessed with this actress. Man, she she ugly cries terrible, though, man. I like a good ugly cry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Court's make, making the women cry since 1991, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> ugly cry, no less. Ugly. Oh, they got to have the ugly cry, man. They got to they gotta look like anguish slightly, you know, to make to turn me out anyway, you know. Oh God! Yeah, can you please tell me the added bonus is the running mascara and eyeliner? Please tell me that just does a little bit more for you. You gotta have that, you know. 
Maybe this got like, super uncomfortable now. Now I'm super uncomfortable. I'm really sad I even made the joke about the loving a good or ugly cry. Like, you know, the, the, the lipstick needs to be touched <laughs> up, but I, I say, no, don't do that, baby. Don't, don't need that in your life, you know? It's a... Uh... No, no, no. Let the, let the mascara run. <laughs> and then slow tug. Sorry. Oh, I've created a monster with the two of you. <laughs> Just nibble your ear like fucking, you know, never mind. I'm, I'm done. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> okay, I'm stopping too. I'm done. I'm done. But, um, You've managed to creep out Suzanne. That's something that I never thought I'd see happen. <laughs> man, oh man. <laughs> um, <laughs> your chief of plot synopsis. <laughs> An investigative reporter must send the newly unbound Pinhead and his legions back to hell. Uh, that's your IMDb synopsis. Uh, t- stars Terry <laughs> Terry Farrell as Joey Summerskill, our reporter. Doug Bradley's back again as Pinhead and nobody else. Uh... Kevin Kevin Bernhardt, uh, who's primarily a soap star, apparently, as the very douchey J.P. Monroe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ken, Ken, I didn't even think he was acting. I think that was just this guy. Could <laughs> be, yeah. Like. Ken Carpenter as uh, Terry's boss, Doc, um, who I think is, is dubbed in this movie. It seems like nobody talks like that. It just, it's really weird. Yeah, he uh, looks like he should sound like Lemmy, too. He yes. doesn't at all, but he looks like he should. Like a 72-pack-a-day cigarette habit on this guy. <laughs> By the way, Terry, have you had your monthly yet? It's kind of a thing for me, you know. It's, it's a, <laughs> wow. it's a really, it has a really deep voice, kind of rapey, so I had to do a rapey uh, rhetoric there. Anyway, the girl in question, Paula Marshall as Terry, and she also plays the the, the nude, skinless girl who gets dragged into uh, the, the column of sadness, uh, you know, if you will. Oh, really? That was the same actress, huh? The same actress, yeah. Wow. Um... Yeah, this one basically takes this this reporter who never can get a story, who finds a story in this in this young girl Terry, uh, because she she's a uh, one of JP's fuck buddies who owns this this uh, very industrial or whatever you want to call it club, who's a real sleaze bag, runs away, steals the box from his latest acquisition, you know, which is the, that column that you see pop up in the second movie but is much more refined looking in this movie and uh I really, I really dig the sculpture statuette look of the column in this one that's one of the highlights of the film for me yeah it looks really good but um yeah you know all shit here hits the fan from there joey comes in thrall with the box yada 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 pinhead comes the humanized pinhead in this movie, which you can either be a fan of or not a fan of. I'm sure we'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to kick oh, it to you. we definitely are. I'll kick it to Court first and ask him what he makes of this movie. Okay, this was the first of the Hellraisers that I ever saw. I saw this the summer of fifth grade, I think. And it was like on Fuzzy Max, so I, I saw very little of it, even though I watched it. Because it was late at night and it came on after another Fuzzy Max feature that, you know, is something that a teenage boy of that age would be more apt to want to see. And I fell in love with this and I thought it was the greatest thing in the world until I got to see the first and the second. And then my mind was completely blown by those two. So a lot of the disappointment that a lot of folks have in this one and a lot of the feelings of letdown and the fact that it's more or less pinhead is Freddy Krueger in this film that people don't like. I mean... I didn't have an issue with that the first time that I saw it. So I don't really get a lot of those. Like, I understand where people are coming from, from those arguments and watching it after I've seen the other films, I really get the, the letdown of the pinhead trying to be shoehorned into a slasher role that they're doing here. But I, I didn't have a problem with it at all. And I, I mean, this was my introduction to the series and I absolutely enjoyed it the first time that I watched it and really dug it. And it kind of uh, it kind of shaped my my taste in horror and looking for even more extreme stuff because when I saw this it weirded the shit out of me and it, it just would not leave my head and I immediately started decorating my room like uh, JP's club as best I could started grabbing old baby dolls and mutilating them and hanging them on the wall and finding old barbed wire and stuff and hanging it up and cutting up t-shirts and things. And then I, I melded that with the actual Hellraiser motif of all the chains and started hanging shit like that from my ceilings, much to my family's chagrin. It, 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 <laughs> oh my the, God, I love it. The, the club, the club itself does have a really great look. I will give it that for, for 
For 92, it looks really great. Right. And that's, I mean, that's around the time that I saw it as like 92, 93 anyway. And I just completely transformed my room into like this Hellraiser landscape in like the matter of like a night and a half, like without anybody really knowing it by, by doing all this stuff and just making it super creepy. And my parents were like getting ready to schedule an exorcist. They thought something was really <laughs> wrong with me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think that is fucking amazing. Yeah, I wish I still had some photos of it, Suzanne. You would totally dig it. It it looked like if you opened the door, it just looked like one of the rooms right after the the Cenobites ripped some people apart. You know, because there was just like ripped pieces of clothing and fake blood that I painted on there, or like mixed acrylic paints to make it look like it was bloody and stuff. And my parents were really worried about me for the longest time <laughs> after that. <laughs> So yeah, I really I mean, the first time I watched it, I really love the film. And every time I watch it, I always find something new that I'm gonna nitpick or I have a problem with story wise or the way they handle Pinhead. But a lot of the stuff that made Pinhead iconic is from this movie. Like people that are doing the I am the way and do I look like someone that cares what God thinks and all the lines that he says in this, you know. It's it's all the stuff that people remember is kind of from this one for pinhead iconography, especially the I am the way. I mean, that even got sampled by the entombed on uh, the Wolverine Blues album. So it's, you know, it still has a cultural impact. And I can't hate on a movie that features not one, but two different armored saint performances in the middle of the club. I mean, I'm happy. So I dig it. It's a fun movie to watch. Cool. Suzanne. Oh, my God. I really don't like this movie at all. (laughs) I really, really don't. And I'm going to seriously age myself here. I saw this in the theater the night it opened. Me and 10 of my hardcore horror movie friends, we went and checked up to the very middle aisle at the just opened up. They had, somebody had bought the, the town's uh, adult cinema and redid it. I mean, I guess they, they really had to do some scrubbing on the floors and Hopefully they installed new chairs because God only knows what was infested that they would have been infested with. I just, there are parts of this movie that I find incredibly interesting. I just think that there are parts of this that it, it just seems like three different stories that they just kind of, kind of paper mache together. It, you know, you have your, your story of the club owner. You and the the girl. You've got the investigative reporter thing going on. And then you have like this little pinhead backstory thing. And none of the three for me ever seem to be, you know, fully brought into fruition. I I fucking hate the new Cenobites. I was like, I, I was looking at my friends after this was over. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I really hope they don't make another movie. And if they do, I hope they did not bring the CD man back because that was that was an atrocity. It's a good taste. <laughs> but they're razor sharp CDs, and when he throws them, it cuts you up, Suzanne. Oh, <laughs> great. Now I got a Peter Murphy song stuck in my head. <laughs> oh, it, it, but, but what if, if, if they had made those CDs play as he was throwing them? You know, that might have done something for me. Oh, but I think this, that's this even is, cheesier. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it's just a thought. I just really. I did not like anybody in this movie. You know, they, they, Terry tried to play up being like this little waif and going from bad boyfriend to bad boyfriend. And she's striking up this friendship with this reporter. And it just seems completely wasted to me because there's nothing there to like. The acting in this is so fucking bad. There's a few scenes I like, though. One of my favorite scenes in the entire movie, just because I think it's just. (laughs) Yes. How (laughs) subtle it is. Is the scene where you just. Not a laugh attack. Come on. Sorry, guys. It's okay. Is the scene when you just see the blood coming out from underneath the club doors. That is my favorite scene in the entire movie. I didn't really care for the treatment of the backstory on Pinhead. I really thought the ending, actually the ending, the ending, ending of this, when you have your big office building, that was another part that I actually really liked. 
But overall, I just, I hated everything. I've been to those clubs and none of them are that glitzy. I can promise you that, especially one of that order. My, and my third favorite part of this movie is honestly, I do dig Armored Saint, but Let Me Singing Hellraiser. That is one of my other favorite parts. But like I said, there's just so much to this movie that it just, there was not even realized. And the only pin, the only Cenobite you have is Pinhead. And I really do dig the other Cenobites. And as I said earlier, I really would love to see a little bit of origin on the Cenobites. That's one thing I know I'll never have. So I've kind of rewritten their stories in my head. But yeah, that's kind of how I feel about Hellraiser 3. Well, first of all, Susanna, I'm not telling you that, that you're wrong, that you don't like the movie, but what I'm telling you is next time you watch Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, turn your brain off and have a good time, okay? Because <laughs> I, I love that this film doesn't take itself too seriously. I mean, right down to JP and the way he acts, right down to, you know, uh, Doc as, as camera head son of I doing the one-liners, they're really bad. I know they're really bad, but you know what? It's kind of funny all ready for your close-up thing and then the camera eye pops out and puts a hole in the guy's head that's uh amazing um what else the club scene i mean do you, you still have bob keen a leftover from these other hellraiser movies doing the makeup effects and there there is some some crazy cg stuff in there like you expect in a 1992 horror film but the practical shit in there you know the chains coming out and ripping people's skin off their faces and shit like that I think it really works. It, I think it's terrific because it's a great club scene, and that's what you need a lot of, you know, this film that was probably filmed like in 1990 or something, you know, but it still had that leftover 80s stuff where everything needs a club scene, and this <laughs> club scene is uh, kind of great. And um, somebody gets uh, the, the, the drink come out of their thing, and one of my favorite effects, you know, crack the CG effects in this movie is that, that, that um, ice spike that goes in that girl's mouth. You know, it's it's fun. Um, the, the humanization of Pinhead in this movie is something I have a major problem with. I know this is the thing in, in horror sequels, as you get further down the line, they think that you want to know more and more about these characters and what they're all about. They just throw this captain in here from, like, I guess World War II or something to say, okay, I, I was once like, one, like these bad people. And I had the box, and yada, yada, yada. And now I became a minion of hell. But you know what? I don't like being a minion of hell anymore. So you know what you got to do? You got to shut this motherfucker down. You're more powerful than you think. Blah, 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 I am immortal. You know, it's just, um... Yeah, her flashback scene's are real lame, too, because they only used it as, like, a catalyst for the end to, to where, you know, the whole idea is of her having to go through the mirror, and then she brings it up, and she says... Hey, is it, is it over, is it? I thought I had to go through the mirror. And then she knows what? She wakes up in a field or something and sees her father and says, Here, Daddy, here's the box. Guess what? Not her father. It's Pinhead. Didn't see that coming, did you, Terry? C come on now. It's uh, that master, master mind manipulator, uh, Pinhead. Um, <laughs> real standout scene in this movie. And I read they didn't want to do this in a real church because the, the, um, the damn crew had a a real sacrilege thing going on with the the church scene, but it is. Oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Suzanne. Oh no, I was going. That, it, that was pretty much to mess up. But yes, it's. Uh, I started. Okay, one of my favorite scenes in any Hellraiser film is this scene because I love I love the whole um, stigmata thing where he pulls the pins out of his head and the worms are coming out and he does the I am the way thing with his arms sticking out and his head tilted. That's great, and as all his sacrilege is going on, all the windows are breaking to the point where the altar breaks, and, and uh, of course, um, give, <laughs> grabs the, 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 the Padre, and starts pulling parts of himself out of his body, and you know, this is my body, this is my, my, my blood, and, of course, makes him eat it. And I think he eats it for the most part, which is kind of nasty, but um, that whole idea is, is kind of great, and the whole... When he first comes into the church, he doesn't give a fuck about, you know, consecrated ground and nothing. This is, I love that pinhead swagger. I forget the, the line, something about demons or metaphysical, so something, something or other. And then her line of, 
what the fuck is that or something like that. It's a, uh, it's kind of great. Um, the 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 final set of bites you get, I guess the Paula Marshall set of bite is the lamest because she just has like a like a trach sticking out of her neck with a cigarette sticking out of it. It's a remake of the female Cenobite with just a cigarette there, and then she burns people with cigarettes with her skinned hands for pleasure, which makes no sense, yeah. <laughs> it's really stupid. But I like, I like the new fat Cenobite, who is obviously the bartender who could, like, could blow fire out of his mouth, you know, and I don't know what the point of his, his thing of gasoline is. Except he does use it once. He uses, like, a Molotov cocktail. Which but it's a shaker that you yeah. would make a you would make a cocktail out of, and it's oh, yeah. filled with gasoline. Yeah, it's dumb, but I mean they they had some logic to it. It's just dumb. He does <laughs> he, he does use it the one time in the movie. He does use it. Yeah. Uh, so I give him that. Uh, JP set a bite with the with the pistons in his head, which I kind of love because he's just getting off on it. You can tell as as the pistons are going back and forth. Um, see the head we mentioned. Which is a lot cooler than Susanna's talking about, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, he throws razor sharp CDs, and to make them even more deadly, they're a bunch of Amy Grant CDs. Oh god! Oh god! That's yeah. why they're killing people. Just, just put my heart in motion all over the place. You see, what I did their court. You know, it's, it's uh... yeah. I see oh, it. Baby, I see baby. It. <laughs> <laughs> Always and forever, Gary. Oh goddamn. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> we, we mentioned Doc. Doc, who's just an all-around long-haired, mustachioed person. The reveal of, for some reason, she walks in a room full of candles in the club, and Doc is sitting there with his head in his hands and the camera sticking out of the top of his head. I like that prosthetic. It looks really awesome. So there's a lot to love about this film, Suzanne. I'm sorry, go ahead, Court. I was going to say that the sound of the camera servos going off as she walks up to it, like that it's auto-focusing on her, oh, yeah. always always creeped me out. <laughs> I mean, I know that that is actually not a horrible effect, but I mean, for me, I guess the bulk of this, I find the movie to be incredibly just cheap-looking. I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. I, I, I think it's got great, great makeup effects in there along with the crappy CG, which you get very little of, uh, all things considering... So this this is where we disagree. It's, it's it's stupidity that looks good to me, you know. So I've seen two hundred percent times worse than this movie. Trust me. And it's a uh, this is this is real fine for me. And uh, I'm not saying you're wrong. You like what you like, Suzanne. It's just I I happen. To but I'm wrong. Well, you're wrong in in, in in my in my sense. I don't mean you're wrong in general. You know. Oh, I like you just you just have to agree to disagree because you guys are both having the opposite opinions here and i'm dead center in the middle where i'm like yeah i can see both of your points it's just that this film really inspired me to be a weirdo so i still like it <laughs> mommy, mommy and daddy stop fighting you know yeah no so... kidding i've already gone through a parents getting divorced i don't need you guys to oh god no that would never ever happen i love gary way too much well i mentioned uh paul marshall shows up in another hickox film and that is warlock the armageddon and uh we mentioned her ugly crying she ugly cries on that. She ugly cries on this. Again, it's a kink, but whatever. Here we are. But uh, <laughs> uh, man, I can't wait for us to do Warlock the Armageddon. That's another sequel I love. Man, oh man, fucking. Jedi. Oh, you have to count me in on that one. Fucking Jedi, <laughs> the Jedi Knight, uh, Warlock twins. Uh, you know, <laughs> form of a druid. Form of a druid. <laughs> form oh, shape God. of. Some water. Form of R.G. Armstrong, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, if you guys do that, please let me know, because I've actually never watched the movie. Oh, it's dumb fun. Oh, wow. We'll get into it. Yeah. We'll talk yeah, about yours and shit, you know. Yeah, totally dumb fun. Stonehenge. I believe that'll work, too. If we, uh... Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, they did live. Oh, I'm not done now. I'm going to kick it through court again and ask him anything else you'd like to say about Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, and uh, what would you give a 1 to 10? Yeah, my final statement that I have to say on this is the next time you guys watch Hellraiser 3, if you think it sucks, just picture an extremely young and impressionable mind like myself getting really, really interested in all of the bondage and weird sex stuff that's happening to the point that I turned my room into a Cenobite den in a matter of two days after watching it. 
and I've been weird ever since. So just picture that and then have some fun with that idea. <laughs> you won't look at this film the same way. Uh, it's not great, but it's entertaining. I still love watching it. And like I said, all the fun stuff that you mentioned too, Gary, with the, the, the interaction with the priest and then all the quotable lines, they were trying to turn Pinhead into Freddy. And some of that stuff works for me. Some of it doesn't. So it's just like... It's a seven. It's it's above average. It's still very entertainable for me, but it's not the best of of even the first four films, you know, but I still like it. So seven's a good solid number, I think. I can't wait to hear this. Uh, Suzanne, what about you, girl? Well, I, I'd already thought this over before I was going to get my number just because um, I'm actually I've, I've, I'm upping my number just because of it reshaping court into the <laughs> devious... <laughs> dude that you see before you today and yep. for that i am thankful for this movie got Thank me into you. bondage <laughs> bondage and gore baby bondage and gore and yep. ugly crying don't forget yep. the ugly crying well yeah that, that, that yeah. goes hand in hand with everything else oh god yeah so yeah i'm i'm upping this to a four because believe me my rating was a lot lower for me a lot of it just certain ideas i really wish i'd seen fleshed out a little bit more Wow, that was a really terrible pun for this movie. Mm. Oh, I thought you did that on purpose. <laughs> no, actually, I didn't. <laughs> but I just, I guess I expected a little bit more. And that's usually one of my issues. So, yeah, I'm at the four, and it got a higher rating because it court psyops, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, so, I, so I doubled your rating just by telling that story about how it turned me into a deviant po- pervert that likes bondage now <laughs> yes actually it did <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> i think this is crazy fun and i think you'd be crazy not to have a lot of crazy fun with it just you know like i said turn your brain off and forget that those no don't forget those first two films exist but forget those two forget those two films or take themselves very seriously and this one obviously does not and have fun with it man it gets an eight for me I, I could watch this one even over even over the first two sometimes depending how I feel okay and just to, and let me explain that because sometimes you need a certain kind of movie in your life and you want to just turn something on that's just nuts and, and crazy and silly sometimes you want something more serious for from a movie so you go watch those first two but this this I think is a happy medium and this is why it gets an eight for me and it's fucking terrific and Man, oh man, I, I I like it, man. I like it a lot. But um, <laughs> that's it for this one. And of course, um, as Eric would say, we'll see you all again in part two. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema Psyops, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast. Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. All right. That's a... About the end of this one, and um, I had a good time with the, the present company. The other company was missed, but they had, were doing other things, and that's fine. They're, they're feeling down or feeling ill. Not that kind of ill, we hope. Don't want to talk about that, you know, but I hope that, you know, all you people out there are staying safe and... Stay inside. Stay inside. No mass orgies, people. It's not healthy, okay? Not healthy at all. Um, 
but yeah, stay tuned for for some some good stuff coming from us. Um, some more quarantine reviews. Um, I've been doing I did a watch party once. Hopefully, I'm doing a watch party tomorrow night. So if you guys want to hang out, watch some films with whoever whoever's sitting in. You know, 30th anniversary of the Turtles. I'm gonna say about that. That's happening the night after we record this. So hope hope whoever shows up shows up. But I'm gonna kick it to Darlene and. I'm ever uh, pimper her group one more time because uh, this is a uh, important stuff for this is what the internet's all about people for about geeks uniting you know it's it's important so go for it girl oh well thank you um yeah the group that I run is a fandom collective meetup it's in Cleveland but you don't need to be from Northeast Ohio we welcome everybody to come join our group on uh, Facebook we're also on Instagram and Twitter as well and. Um, you know, with everything that's going on, we want to still do meetups. And as I mentioned earlier, we're looking into doing virtual um, type events. And our first one's going to be um, Cards Against Humanity. We're going to see how that goes. Cool. Yeah, people are doing D&D online now. So that's that's something, you know, running campaigns online. Yeah, this this whole new um, virtual stuff is, is new to me. So I, I, I defer to all my... Um, fellow geeks who are much more well-versed in that. <laughs> That's good. It's good to have those people, you know. Yes, yes. I don't take apart a toaster because I don't know how to fix it, so I send it to my friends who know how to fix things, these, these, these computers and such, and tech stuff, and I need something photoshopped, yada, yada, yada. It's good to have people for that. <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I have a good group of geeks around me that, that knows a little bit of everything that I don't, so... Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Iris... Um, yeah, no, this is pretty much it for me right now. So I am here, and this is where you'll find me. Cool. I'm, I'm waiting for the fan addict to start start back up again. I would love to. I would love to hear some more of that. It's uh. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> if, if you're feeling ambitious, girl. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Of course, the backlog of uh, the expo- exploitation film cast. I'm sure Mike yeah. still has them available. And, um, yes, they are still available, and, and, and you can go go listen to them at uh, the exploitationfilmcast.com. Now, now, what is that old man doing now besides smoking his cigars and shit? You know? Oh, it's actually Pipes. Pipes. And he has a, a pipe show uh, on, I, I think it's on YouTube. So, yeah, he's doing pretty good. I have, to, I have to look at this now. You just, you know, I'm, I'm not fascinated by pipes. Just, just to see the old guy again. He's, he's one of my mentors, Iris. Yeah, to, I know. To, to he's one honest. of mine too. One of mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this show, the Two Drink Men commentaries, burning for Springwood. And pretty much anything I do can be heard on the Legion Podcast Network. Uh, Bo has a Legion Podcasters Relief Fund going for uh, our fellow brethren and. Uh, Equal of a lady, a sister, and I guess you would call them. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you would call that. Um, that are possibly out of work or having little work, and they're having trouble with funds because it's a it's a rough time and for people. And I, I've heard people in Chicago talking about run strikes, but then again, they could just easily toss you out of your ass, and that's would be not good either. So if you haven't given to it yet, I think we they've raised over five hundred dollars so far to help help our. our help our people uh make, makes make some ends meet and that's a it's always a good thing so um yeah next up i don't know what's coming up next i, I have i have guests i have guests in line that that, that, are, that are pretty uh pretty active i know i know um damn patrick walsh from the scream scream queens podcast is scream queen queens with a z on the end of it not 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 an s he's supposed to come on with us mike white towards the end of april is supposed to come on with us other people, Jerry Cortez, Mr. Venom, supposed to come on with us at some point in time. These are all, you know, tentative things, and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to, to schedule them. But so next show, I couldn't tell you what that's going to be, but it's going to be something. It's the one thing this quarantine has given me. It's a uh, time to put out more content and people be around, and, you know, and that's that's always nice that they think it shows out to people. And I'm going along winded once again. But, uh... Thanks for listening. Take care of yourself, please. And remember the Sin Beef Podcast. If you've got beef, we've got the grinder. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now.